Hi there and welcome to the Maya Learning Channel. In this short tutorial I'm going to address one of the most common questions I get regarding our creating a character rig tutorial. Is it possible to freeze the IK arms to zero in the T-pose position? The short answer is yes, but before I show you how, let's take a moment to review what we did before and why we did it that way. If you prefer to get started right away though, feel free to fast forward to 118. So back in part 23, I showed you how to create stretchy IK limbs using a combination of measurement nodes and driven keys. As part of that, I also told you to save the IK arm control's default position as a preset. This is because the default position of the arms isn't always a universal thing. Some people like T-pose, others prefer A-pose, and in some rare cases, some people prefer something else entirely. Leaving 000 at the origin gave all these possibilities a common ground. It also simplified our IKFK matching script in Appendix A. But what if you knew for a fact that your animator preferred a specific default pose, or what if you needed the rig to align with others? Luckily there's a way to do that, which I'll show you now. So here we have our finished rig from Appendix B, complete with the IKFK matching app we developed, as well as stretchy IK toggles. I'm going to set my default pose to a T pose, but this will work with any start pose you like. Let me just switch to IK mode first. If I select the arm control, notice these non-zero values in the channel box. This is what I want to change. So I'll right click, then go to Freeze, Translate. Now I can return to my default position by setting all the translate values to zero. While that's all good, look at what happens when I try to use my match app now. It breaks. So why did this happen? Well, recall how we built the match app in the first place. It takes a duplicate of the IK arm control that lives inside the result skeleton space, then matches the actual arm control to it. However, by freezing the arm control just now, we actually changed its relative zero position. To think about it another way, suppose John and Sue run a foot race, starting from the same point. Their finish times would be relative. However, if John were to start further up the course, their times would no longer be relative. To fix this, as well as our match app, we'll need to take the gap into account. First, I'm going to create a new snap joint by duplicating the arm control. and then parent it to the left hand result joint, just like in Appendix A. This will change the values to reflect the new space it lives in without moving the copy. Then I'll just delete the old snap joint, rename this one, and then delete its shape. However, this alone isn't enough to fix our match app because it depended on the fact that both the result skeleton and hand control had the same start position in world space, just like in our foot race example. So to fix that, I'm going to modify the IK matching procedure in our script so it no longer makes that assumption. Instead, I'm going to start at the arm control's current position, then work forwards towards the snap group's position. Using our race analogy again, this would be like shifting Sue up to John's start point. Luckily, whenever you freeze a node's position, its relative position in world space is preserved by its rotate pivot. Sure enough, if I check the arm control and snap group's pivot values, you'll see that they're non-zero. At the moment they're also identical, but that'll change as the arm moves around. It's more important that they're non-zero, that's the key. Like I said before, we're going to start the match at the arm control's current position. So that's left arm control. Now we need to work forwards. To do that, I'll first store both the snap group's rotate pivot and arm control's rotate pivot in their own variables, trp1 and trp2 respectively. Then I'll subtract those spaces and add the difference to the arm control's current position. I'll need to do that once for x, y, and z. 
This plus equals notation just indicates that I want to add to t hand's current value rather than overwrite it. Now we have a matching script that works on relative terms rather than absolute world space terms. To finish our race analogy, that means we're measuring Sue's time relative to John. Now all that's left is to test the script again. It works! Not only that, but you'll find that it works at any scale and orientation, too. Just repeat the process for the right side and your rig is good to go.